All right, Abu Dhabi. You have been incredible. Thank you so much for hosting us. If you think you've seen some fireworks already, get ready for a firestorm because the brave 27 Abu Dhabi main card starts now. Let's bring in our first wire for the main card. From America Top Team, Al Haim UAE, by way of Rio de Janeiro, please welcome Christopher Silva. say this firstly Christopher Silva is taking this fight on short on, notice of the original opponent pulled out of this like Christopher Silva the fighter that he is shows that force and stepping up the short notice the board, not a lot of people give a damn about the yes I want to fight Mohammed get to the kids in the hell to Christopher Silva when the
main action now. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins and two losses and one no contest. He stands 186 centimeters tall and weighs already 83.5 kilograms. Representing America Top Team Al Hahim UAE by way of Rio de Janeiro. Give it up for Christopher Silva. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man, a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands 179 centimeters tall and weighs already 84.1 kilograms. Representing Tiger Muay Thai, Lebanon, and Shoshani Submission Systems. Give it up for Mohammed, the latest for D. Your referee is Mark Goddard. Trunks and we are on their way. Christoph Silva usually competes at 77 kilos, but he looks right at home there with that free and being a middleweight. Beautiful calf kick. You see immediately Mohamed Fakhreddin using that Muay Thai. Oh, so beautiful beautiful different kick. strikes and throwing up powerfully, too. Okay. Good right hand landed by Silva. Oh, oh those kicks already are buckling that knee leg, gentlemen. And bruising already on the calf oh, of Christopher Silva. That one kind of hurt Fakhreddin because he didn't take the right angle. But he's throwing strikes back. Oh, he's oh, he's oh,
to give me the opportunity to come back and fight on the show. Um, I feel like this is my weight class. I've been fighting on the wrong weight class. I feel healthy. I feel strong. Uh, I'm ready. Two things. Put me on the tournament for the 6.2. That's one. Two. Give me a crumb. I won that fight. You have to say no more. Mohammed Fakhrdin, do what he needs to do. Your winner, Mohammed Fakhrdin. Let's bring out our first warrior in the semifinals for the KHK World Championship. From Lebanon, please welcome Mohammed, the latest And ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome his opponent into the cage. From Brazil, please welcome Kleber Orgulio Silva.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this bout will be two five-minute rounds for the KHK World Championship Semifinals. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and three losses. He stands 179 centimeters tall and weighs already 96.5 kilograms. Representing Tiger Muay Thai and fighting out of Lebanon. Give it up for Muhammad, the latest fighter. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This fans a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 9 losses. He stands 191 centimeters tall and weighs already 100.6 kilograms. Representing Nordeste Jiu Jitsu and fighting out of Brazil. Put your hands together for Kleber Orgulho. Silva! Your referee is Alan Jackson. 36 years of age, the younger Silva. This is history in the making. The first bout in the open weight format tournament. My name is Nolo Keith, and I am calling the action alongside the OG Kira Finesse and the great and powerful Phil Campbell. Gentlemen, we are about to watch history. Yeah, this fight's absolutely huge. You have Mohamed Fakhreddin coming in as the smallest man at only 212 pounds, but that's going to lend itself to speed. That's going to lend itself to him being the quickest to the punch. And as we remember, with those leg kicks of Mohamed Fakhreddin, he broke Christopher Silva's leg in his last fight. That's how dangerous the latest is. And Fakhreddin, as you alluded to, Phil, coming off a victory recently, and this is where he got the opportunity. He called from it off that victory, but... He got he, caught by Kleber there. He may be the... This, Lighter Beautiful fire, the power coming from Silva at the moment. He's almost downloading the information that Fakhreddin is giving and only striking and landing. Mohamed Fakhreddin leading the dance now, trying to big overhand. That was just a little bit of a slip, but then follow up with kicks and rips from Mohamed Fakhreddin. Both, both fighters as well, Phil. As Carlos was alluding to at the start in his introduction, they are only two five-minute rounds in the semi-finals. So you can see both fighters thrown with power because they know they have to put on a display to get the judges' nod if we get that far. And not only is it two five-minute rounds, but it also lends itself. They want to get in there. They want to finish early. Look at those kicks from Paradin. Paradin just looks like he has a cut just over that right eyebrow. So that could play into the tournament if he was to advance, but Fakhreddin is unloading with heavy shots, tearing apart that lead leg of Silva. Perfect game plan from the, from the Muay Thai stylist Fakhreddin. He's really, there's the there's switch. The, switch the ultimate tail, Phil. 100%, that lets you know that you have hurt your opponent if they start to switch their stances. Coming into this, a lot of people thought Fakhreddin was going to be too light. He's competed at welterweight and middleweight. They thought he was going to be too light. But he was in and talking about it, Phil. Life-changing for Mohamed Fakhreddin if he was to go on and win this tournament. Oh, without a shadow, without, he just got caught with a stiff jab from Kleber there, but $100,000 for the Lebanese man. And there's a big right hand by Kleber! And Fakhreddin trying to throw back, but he's hurt! Oh, he's wobbled! He's wobbled him, he's on shaky legs! Come in, but I thought Fakhreddin will sit down and throw big shots! He is biting down on the mouse shield here, and these men are trading! Heavy leg kick as well, but Silva looking to land a clean shot, but Fakhreddin! Will it to go out on a shield? That's exactly the type of fighter Mohamed Fakhreddin. What with a shield. wild exchange! With his shield or on it, and now just marauding forward, but caught again with an uppercut from Kleber. I do it! It's hurt Kleber! And he's head kicked! He's head kicked by Fakhreddin, ripping to the body! Mohamed Fakhreddin! Uh, he's throwing an uppercut on his own! Oh, this is the definition of rock and sock and robots. These men must have collected Pokemon cards when they were younger because they are trading right now, no Loki. This is incredible, and Silva changes level, looking for the takedown. Weissman, a nasty elbow, but Silva gets the double leg. 
And this was the best possible game plan from Silva. He needs a moment to collect himself. He was wobbled heavy there. But no, he could take the back if he gets the hooks in. Working now for the rear naked choke. Back in, looking to get back to his feet, but there's a hook. In. Silva being patient in his position, as though it is factored in. He's aware of the danger. Intelligently, he's keeping the hands planted down, so he is classified as a down opponent. The beautiful level change. Just needs to stop those legs out. There's a bit right arm by Fakhredi. And it's Silva who backs off and now looks tired, Phil. Oh, Mohamed Fakhredi is he's in his groove right now. He just beckons clever on. This fight is fantastic, and again with those devastating leg kicks. Both fighters are being hurt throughout this opening three minutes. A beautiful right hand down the middle by Fakhredi. Almost with Silva when he lands, then really hurt Fakhredi. Fakhredi landed in punches and punches. Fakhredi is the quicker to the punch, being the lighter fighter. What is this going to take out of both men before we even get to the final? This is insane. What a way to kick off Brave 29 here. Fakhredi the beautiful almost kick of a Full mount there, needs to spread the hit to get away. Silva in on that and completes. We've got 130 left in the first round, and what a way to open Brave Combat Federation 29. But now Fahredin in the ascendancy, he's just standing over Clever as if to say, get up, what have you got, let's do this. Coming out to the final minute of the first round here, and Fakhredi might be assessed in the position, but might be also catching a moment of breath here. Yeah, to reassess, yeah, to collect himself. He needs to be careful, diving into the guard of the logistical position. Big, big shot by Mohamed Fakhredi! This could be the beginning Silver of the end! Silver is coming up there, Mohamed Fakhredi closely! The latest! Potentially looking to become the greatest! Let He's done it! it. The referee has stepped in! Mohamed Fakhredi has got the stop! The middleweight advances to the final of the KHK Open Tournament and Silva on his knees disputing the stoppage. The referee has stepped in. The smallest man in the tournament at 200. Oh, there's just a little bit of confusion. Celebration has kicked off and no! No, the, the round hasn't ended. The round hasn't the round ended. Hasn't ended. We have now have Clever Silva making his way out of the cage. There was a minute to go in the bout. A referee what looked I, to have stepped in here. What I think's happened though is, what I think's happened though is he's heard a buzzer in the crowd. He's heard an air horn. Somebody in the crowd may have brought an air horn or some sort of horn with them. And that's what he's, he's heard. Set. The referee is seen to be saying it's over. There was a minute left on the clock. Mohamed Fakhredin has celebrated vigorously here, Phil. And this is, ins this is insane. I've not seen confusion like this. There was a minute to go in the fight. Mohamed Fakhredin and his team celebrated the victory. And now all of a sudden, similar to Anderson Silva, Michael Bisping, Mohamed Fakhredin now has to get his senses back. Well, we as, just had a four minute round. As we clearly saw, there was a minute, a minute three or so left in the round. Now, what is this going to take out of Mohamed Fakhredin when you've expended adrenaline after thinking that you've won? We knew there was going to be drama here tonight, but this is insane. We can't dress it up any better. This is a no. huge error by the referee. Yeah, what I think has happened is he's heard an air horn perhaps in the crowd. Something has given him an indication that the, that the round had ended. Yes, it's a mistake. I'm, it's, I'm sure it's an honest mistake. But how can Mohamed Fakhredin? We have to we have to get past that. We have to move on. Wow. How can Mohamed Fakhredin collect himself? How can he refocus? We are in the second round of this belt. Mohamed Fakhredin a toddy one of what's that gonna take out of him? Exactly, no look here. He, and ultimately, Phil, even if the ref wasn't stopping you, Fakhredin was landing big shots to finish with a minute to go. Credit to both fighters. At first, Silva left the cage disgusted. Mm -hmm. Mohamed Fakhredin has now come back down and knows he has a, still has a job to do. That's a beautiful one too for Mohamed Fakhredin. What we all have to do now is focus on the action in front of us.
Silva landed a nice left of his own there. And both fighters breathing heavy. A back of the and landed combinations. And but you can see the hands dropping a little bit once he lands them shots. I think he may be experiencing an, ad an adrenaline dump going into the second round. Nice boxing here by Packard and Bill. He's really utilizing fundamentals here. Oh, nice one too. Oh, I still can't get over this. I know we have to move faster. This is insane. And all my ears looking at and calling mixed martial arts. I'm not seeing anything like that, but credit to both men. Silva looks like he could be a little bit gassed. He's not replying quick off the bat here. I think Mohamed Packard, if he, if he turns it up a little bit and he takes the fight to Cleberson, he could force a stoppage. The big thing is Cleverson, we've seen it in the opening round, Phil. He carries that power. Mm -hmm. He has one shot finishing power. So Mohamed Fakhardin needs to watch everything he's doing. Silva looked like an exhausting takedown attempt. Easily fended by Mohamed Fakhardin. Plenty of time in this second round for Mohamed Fakhardin to end the fight as he almost did in the first, Phil. Big, big shots. A referee asked for more. Silva. Stuck in his position, Mohamed Fakhardin. He hasn't pinned, that's good head control, and he's just landing shots. He's like a coal miner looking for a diamond with these shots, landing these vicious, vicious ground and pound. Beautiful elbow, a referee is looking closely yet again. Can Mohamed Fakhardin technically finish this fight for the second time? Silva looks tired, he needs to work, Mohamed Fakhardin. Putting out a great work right here in the second round, Phil Campbell. We thought it was two wins and you progress and you would win the title. It seems for Mohamed Fakhreddin it's going to be three wins and you could potentially win the belt. But he needs to up the frequency here. It doesn't necessarily need to be heavy, hard, concussive shots. He needs to up that frequency yeah. and force force Selva into some sort of action. I'd like to Plenty see any of work. The referee asking for work, but he's more so asking for Silva on the bottom to show me something. Advance your position. You can't defend shots with your face. I'd like to see a little bit of posture and work here from Fakhreddin. He's got that feel. We always refer to it as that anchor position, the half guard. But this is taking away all the time. But Fakhreddin on top really put in an exclamation mark thus far on this performance. And this time, he called it. the That's referee it. sees it. And this time, Mohamed Fakhreddin advances to the final of the KHK Openweight Tournament. He had to expend more energy than he thought, but Phil, that shows the fighter's heart and the fighter's mind of the middleweight, Mohamed Fakhreddin. It shows the maturity, it shows the focus that he's lesser fighters, lesser fighters would have given up, lesser fighters would have gone, but he was in there to the very end, showing his heart, showing his maturity, and showing his ability as a fighter, as the first finalist of the KHK Open Weight Tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, that was bizarre. And as Phil alluded to, I firmly believe that it was just, uh, the referee did hear an air horn. There's an air horn in the arena. A referee thought that it was an air horn to end and sound the end of the, set, of the first round. But unfortunately, confusion. But credit to both fighters. They realigned, got back in the fight. And here we look at Mohamed back in. And that, out, that work rate, Derek. Absolutely phenomenal work rate by Mohamed Fakhreddin. So again, the work rate of Mohamed Fakhreddin, and he advances on. He called for this opportunity after he won in Abu Dhabi. He's got the chance. He's taken it with both hands, and he's advanced to the final. He has advanced to the final unless and it is his possibility he's suffered an injury. You can get a yeah. broken hand in a fight, you can get a broken leg in a fight, so we're not yet 100% sure if Mo Fakhreddin is going to move forward in this tournament, but we do believe that's what's gonna happen. You gotta say, he, he has plenty of time. He has plenty of time to recover. We've got the full card ahead, and what a card we have, but Almost, in some ways, Kirk, did that controversy take the shine off what Fakhreddin done in that fight? In my opinion, no. In my opinion, Mo Fakhreddin is going to have won three fights in one night yeah. if he takes this tournament. It's an absolutely unprecedented step. It must be said as well, 
But Silva, he was on the wrong end of, of that decision in the, in the opening round as well. So for him to collect his senses and get back into the cage, as he walked out of the cage in disgust, so that shows that his will to continue and fight on, but Mohammed Fakadin has just jumped over the cage to embrace his highness. But, yeah, I gotta say, we were expecting drama tonight, Kerry, but I didn't think we were gonna be tuning in to an episode of EastEnders or, I don't know, Hollyoaks or something, I don't know. Drama unfolds here at Brave Combat Federation, but I've got to say, can you imagine if Silva had come back and landed a bomb and got to finish it's been about 26 years in this sport and that was absolutely a first for me yeah. left me speechless to be honest back at in just enjoying the cheer of the crowd making his way back out to the cage here's some replays it was excellent boxing technique by back at in he was mixing it up to the body and the head and the old saying if you take away the body or you know you chop down the tree you'll take away the head and Excellent, excellent work. Here's heavy ground and pound and hellacious ground and pound by Fakadin. Tremendous ground and pound and a somewhat unusual and terrific use of his head. Let, let's send it up and make it official to the roaring line, Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible first fight of the night. This bout is stopped by referee Alan Jackson at three minutes and nine seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes. And on to the finals of the KHK World Championship, Muhammad, the latest Pakati. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the first finalist of the KHK Openweight Tournament, Mohamed Fakhreddin. You have just made history. How do you feel, sir? I'm feeling great. A bit tired, but nothing some food can, uh, can't fix. Um, I just want to thank Sheikh Khaled, Mohamed Shaheed, uh, Yusuf Mussaf, everybody in Brave that helped me to get in here. Um, I love you guys. This is a great opportunity. I also want to thank my teammates that helped me put a lot of work in. My sponsors, Madame Magaha, Asr Sultan, Shoshani Submission System, Ali Saleh Tattoo, Tiger Muay Thai. Um, I want to thank everybody, and most of all, my family. They've been uh, through a lot. We've been through a lot. Um, I came in here before I walked in. I said nobody's taking this away from my kids. I ain't gonna let nobody take this away from my kids. This kind of money is gonna change my life. It's gonna change my kid's life. This is what I'm doing it for. This is what I'm here for. This is what I'm gonna get. Nine years, I'm not letting that go away. It's my time, I'm claiming it, baby, I'm claiming it. But there was a little bit of confusion at the end of the first round. We weren't really sure what happened. We think perhaps an air horn or something went off in the crowd. What did it take for you to regroup and refocus and get back in and finish beautifully as you did? I honestly thought the fight was, uh, was done and the ref stopped the fight. I don't really know what happened, but um, it don't matter. No one was gonna stop that fight or, or take that fight away from me. Nobody, and I mean nobody. I came here before I came, I told my family, I'm either coming away with that check and the belt or I'm not coming back. I'm ready to die here tonight. This is what's gonna happen. I get it done, you did. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for one half of the KHK Open Wheel Tournament, Mohammed Fahadi! Hamad Fakhreddin, Lebanon, Tiger Muay Thai, Shishani Submission System.
all the experience that I've had, it's uh, it's definitely coming with me to this fight, and uh, I'm bringing a better version of me for this fight. Uh, it's going to be a different strategy. It's going to be a different. Everything is it's going to be different. Um, but from what I've went through this year, I'm definitely bringing that anger to the fight. I'm going to put on a, a striking clinic for everyone. And uh, unfortunately, Daniel is going to be uh, paying for uh, all the suffering that I that I went through this year, that my family went through this year. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely ready. Uh, it's going to be a good fight. Uh, I'm as ready as I can be. This is the hardest that I have trained since I've started my career. I'm ready to go. My prediction for this fight, either second, third round knockout, or five rounds more. I'm taking a deep, deep water. Bom, meu adversário, eu pesquisei bem, analisei bem o jogo dele e eu, para mim fazer, eu gosto de fazer isso em todas as minhas lutas, em fazer um antijogo. E o que vocês podem esperar, com certeza, é um nocaute, cara. Se der de tudo certo, voltar para baixo, que eu vi que ele tem um grande déficit, né, no caso, de, no jogo de chão. E eu sei do meu trabalho de luta agarrada. Então, mas vou optar mais, se fosse numa aposta assim, vou optar mais por nocaute, que a minha vida vai estar ali na, minha, na ponta da luz. Bom, o que vocês podem esperar de, de, de mim de novo no cage é a mesma coisa de sempre. Vou ir o mais bruto possível, o mais violento possível, o mais violento possível para ser meu adversário, como eu sempre faço, tanto botando para baixo ou nocauteado. Brave Nation, it's time to get pumped for our main event of the evening, where two of the best middleweights on the planet collide inside the Brave Combat Federation arena. Don't blink, as this battle is for the Brave Combat Federation middleweight championship of the world. Two men enter, and only one man leaves with his arm raised in victory and a world championship title belt around his waist. Who comes out victorious in this main event? It's time to find out. Five, five minute rounds for the Brave Combat Federation Middleweight Championship of the World. Brave Nation, it's time for war. Before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. Are you ready? This middleweight title fight in our main event at Bray 41. Is sanctioned by the Bahrain MMA Federation and its president, Mohamed Kambar. Our three judges scoring the bout cage side are Hadi Muhammad Ali, Mateus Sojin, and Andreas Gerner. And our referee is the bandit Jackie Larkin. All right, Brave Nation, let's meet our warriors. First, 
fighting out of the blue corner, the challenger. This man has a mixed martial arts record of 13 wins and four losses. He stands 83.8 centimeters tall and weighs already 83.8 kilograms, representing Tiger Muay Thai in Lebanon and Shoshani Submission Systems. Give it up for the Arab legend, Muhammad, the latest Fak Rakeen. And his opponent, the champion. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and two losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 83.6 kilograms. Representing CM System and fighting out of Curitiba, Brazil. Give it up for the reigning, defending, undisputed Brave Combat Federation middleweight champion of the world, Daniel Gaucho Pereira. For referee instructions, the bandit, Decky Larkin. Right, gentlemen, you've been over the rules. Listen to my instructions all the time. Obey my commands at all the time. If I tell you to stop, you stop and break clean. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Go back to your corners and come out to fight. Ladies and gentlemen, I am more excited than a kitten chasing a leaky cow. This is the fight that we have been waiting for. This is what it has all been culminating in. Mohamed Fakhreddin challenges Daniel Gaucho for the undisputed Brave Combat Federation middleweight title of the world. Phil, this is going to be destruction and destroy. There is no question in my mind this does not go five rounds. Daniel Gaucho, just look at the back on this guy, built like a mini fridge. Well, on the other side of that, Mohamed Fakhreddin in perhaps the best combative shape we have seen him as a mixed martial artist. Phil, as we've discussed earlier, we do believe that Fakhreddin's his entry to winning the title is striking from the outside, particularly the legs. That's what we just saw, and we're seeing again. This is the fight that he wants. A fantastic boxer in his own right, a former Lebanese amateur national boxing champion, so has those hands. We don't need to talk about the heart and will of both men because that is doesn't need to be spoken about. Both these men have indomitable heart and spirit, but both these men can knock you out with one singular effort. Fakhreddin working behind the jab to set up the strikes of there. Incredible kicks to the body. They're the kind of they're the kind of kicks that could potentially break a forearm. And have. All that work at Tiger Muay Thai in Thailand is paying off clearly. 13 wins as a professional. 10 by way of KO or TKO. Six coming in the very first round. Oh, and the nice tie clench there, just shy with that knee. And Fakhreddin is getting these hands off quickly. Fakhreddin is letting the hands go. I'm not sure that's what he wants to do because that's what could happen back. I'm more comfortable when I see him striking from the outside. This is not where he wants to be. Gaucho is that type of fighter that can roll underneath and throw a huge overhand right. We've seen him do it many times. We've seen him do it. We've seen him win the belt with such aggression. Right now, both men are evenly balanced. We see Fakhreddin with just a little more. There he goes. A little less distance between his back and that. Fakhreddin break another man's leg with his own leg kicks. Phil, look at that. Look at Gaucho's left calf. It is already red. Oh, it's red. jacked up. I like what Fakhreddin's doing. This is perhaps the most composed we've seen him in a bite. He gets himself out of that pocket, fights at range. Phil, he's got an extremely high IQ. At times, he chooses not to use it. He chooses to go mano a mano, but he has an extremely high fight IQ, as we're seeing right here. Nice work to land his strikes and get out. Yeah, he's, oh, beautiful head work. Just rolling with the punches there, just getting grazed, but not struck in any kind of concussive way. Needs to be wary of that overhand from Gaucho. A 
you can hear, as you say, in an empty arena, you can hear just how heavy these strikes are. Again, those kicks are starting to add up for Mohamed Fakhreddin. He forced his opponent, Gaucho, to switch stances there. That's telling. By switching the stances, he's admitting that those leg kicks really hurt. And we're doing serious damage. Fakhreddin beginning to pot shot him from the outside. He doesn't want to get, want to get into a one-on-one -on -one trade with him, though. Gaucho has more power in his fists than does my hero, the latest, Fakhreddin. Interestingly, out of nine wins, three of them have come by way of KO for Daniel Gaucho. He actually has more wins via submission than he does via knockout. No question we are watching a complete mixed martial artist in the Brave Combat Federation cage. The champion currently riding a five-fight win streak. Last fight defeated number one contender Chad Hanacombe by a second round TKO to win the inaugural championship. And there is that air of expectancy at the minute, Carrick, that any of these strikes could put somebody's lights out. Phil, I can barely breathe. I literally don't want to blink because I might miss it. Gaucho himself, a multiple times state boxing champion. And Fakhreddin in with the takedown. Big sprawl from Gaucho. Fakhreddin does everything he can to get the dominant position. May look for the trip takedown. There it was. Fakhreddin showing he is a complete fighter. Well, people forget. He's got both hooks in, Phil. Well, people forget Mohamed Fakhreddin is a legitimate Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt. He has a fantastic ground game. He just likes to knock people out. And these are huge He's strikes from Fakhreddin. Savaging Fakhredin. with these shots. Big uppercut to break off. Gaucho wobbles back, his head's clearing, body shot, very intelligent. But as we know, Gaucho is only ever one strike away from the knockout himself. Big overhand from Fakro. Kick to the body to finish from Fakro, Dean, and this fight is living up to all expectations. Every second of it, Phil. All right, Judge Phil, how do you call it? Do you know what? I haven't even been keeping score of the bite. I've been that enthralled by it. But I think if, if you really push me, I would have to say Fakro, based on his movement, based on his intelligent striking, and based on the damage he is doing to Daniel Gaucho. We've seen Gaucho forced to switch stances in the, the, the middle phase of that fight because of the accumulative damage that the leg kicks from Mohamed Fakhreddin had been doing. Absolutely, Irish Thunder. We're calling this one 10-9, Fakhreddin. But well, you're looking right now at the undisputed Brave Combat Federation middleweight champion of the world. This is a guy who is by no means beat. And with the expert coaching of Cristiano Marcelo in his corner, you can see a completely different fighter coming out for round two. We absolutely could. And this is a man, unless his lights are out or he's tapped out, he literally is not going to be beat. <laughs> he is Indeed. always a split second. One shot, literally one shot, one overhand right away from a lights out W. Here we go, second round of five. Championship medal being shown by both men. Gaucho is stoic, Fakhreddin looking confident. Gaucho trying to set up his shots now. Fainting it with a level change, fainting with a right hand. He's trying to get some reads on his opponent rather than let the hands go naked. There's only so many of those leg kicks Fakhreddin mixing it up now, attacking the inside and the outside. Notice little Phil, Gaucho just blocked two of them. Nice little counter hook there from Gaucho, but again, Fakhreddin wise to that wild swinging, looping shots and just ducks out under. He needs to mix up the frequency and sides that he's changing to because you don't want someone like Gaucho to get a read on your movement. Oh, huge kick to the body from Fakhru. Gaucho initiates the clinch. Interesting that Gaucho was the one to initiate the clinch there, Kirik. It was, and then he was the one to pull out. I think, Phil, what he's trying to do is get reads on Fakhreddin. He's trying to figure out what does the man do before he throws an attack at me. If he can figure that out, he may well be able to knock him out. If he can't, he may well, may well get knocked out. What you saw a couple of times there was Gaucho faint, and you've seen that elicited the reaction of the counter lead hook from Fakhro, so that might be something that Gaucho in his corner have picked up on. As I said, Fakhro, very, very high fight IQ. He may even be feeding him reactions to those feints. But that kicking game, that's essentially like 
another man swinging a baseball bat full force at you. I'd rather be hit with a bat to the body <laughs> than be kicked full <laughs> power by Mohamed Fakhreddin. I say that without exaggeration. I meant that factually. Again, that air of anticipation, of expectancy when both of these men step in the cage. Fakhreddin utilizing his length a little bit better, but may have been stunned ever so slightly. Oh, got caught on the chin there, but just shakes it off. Monster chin from the latest. Fakhreddin needs to circle off, does so intelligently, and right now, Daniel Gaucho might have a little bit more confidence. Again, switching the stances because those leg kicks are landing at nauseam. I like the way Fakhreddin's switching it up, lands the leg kicks, goes to the body, potentially go up high next time. I think realistically, Fakhreddin seems to have the, the, the distance. Phil, I am loving Fakhreddin's head movement. He's using the bob, the weave, the slip, the fade, the pivot. He's using beautiful head movement to avoid those knockout strikes. I think he may have just caught the elbow there of Gaucho with that kick because he hopped momentarily on the foot, but then shows that even if it is hurt, he's going to throw it. Shades of the KHK tournament final. Yeah, Phil, any other person kicks an elbow full force, it's going to slow him down. This is not a man who gets slowed down. He went into the cage in that open weight world championship with a broken hand, a broken foot, and torn ligaments in his knee, and he fought his heart out. He doesn't stop. Biggest will I've ever seen in combat sports. It's, oh, those leg kicks again, eliciting the switch from Gaucho, goes up high, showing the diversity of his striking and kicking game. Phil, I'm just grateful we're well into the second round. I enjoy watching these two fight so much. I was, would have been sad if it ended early. And it seems these looping shots from Gaucho just seem to be sort of catching the shoulders and brushing off the neck. Don't think anything's landed clean. And just as I say that, Gaucho lands a nice shot. What I'm really enjoying about Fakhreddin is he's not getting baited into this stand, put your foot down, trade kind of fight that we've seen him get in before. Very intelligent with his moment. He's being aggressive, but he's doing it in a very intelligent manner. Seen a little wrinkle in Gaucho's game too. At first, he always moved forward to initiate the strikes. Now he's trying to counter with the strikes as well. He feels like he's got a sense of his opponent's timing, and he can do things like that right there. Counter off a strike. Again, Fakhreddin covers up, and these shots don't quite land clean, but they don't need to land clean for Gaucho. That's the kind of power he generates. I just wonder, there's a little bit of swelling on that foot of Mohamed Fakhreddin. I wonder if his movement might be impeded by that. If that foot's broken, it doesn't matter. He'll fight right through it. Oh, just like that. Right to the body, finishes going up top. And again, the diversity of his kicks have been wonderful to watch, Kerik. You break this man's limb, he's gonna hit you with that broken limb. That is the latest. <laughs> Woo! Two rounds, again. two title fight rounds. Fantastic again. job. Both these men absolutely laying it out on the line. Gaucho showing his durability. Mohamed Fakhreddin showing, even at 36, he, you can progress as a mixed martial artist. He's, he's showing a more measured, intelligent approach that I think is just absolutely a championship mindset to, to implement in a fight like this, Kerry. It is, absolutely. You're seeing both fighters adapting. You're seeing Mohamed Fakhreddin adapting even quickly. You're seeing the extraordinary power of Gaucho and the extraordinary durability of the latest, Mohamed Fakhreddin. Any prediction, Judge Phil, on how that round went? Again, I think the, the more telling strikes, the, the better movement, the, the greater frequency of strikes were landed by Mohamed Fakhreddin. So, uh, again, if push came to shove, I'd potentially say that it's uh, two rounds up for Fakhru. You just changed my mind with that one. I was gonna call it even. Convince me I'm wrong. Once again, I'd like to re reiterate, I'm a professional commentator, not a professional judge. I've done a lot of judging, but I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> Referee Deggy Larkin just wiping off a little bit of the excess moisture on Mohamed Fakhreddin. He's just piercing back and forth like a lion. 
And when you have two alpha males inside the cage, only one can prosper. Gaucho pressing and striking. It'll be interesting to see if he continues that or if he tries to strike off of counters. Still pressing, pressing, uh, pressing, pressing. Oh, the head movement of Fakro there. He's just rolling with the punches a la Tyson Fury. Gaucho at some point may start to get worried. He may st think, I've stood in front of my opponent. I've thrown eight, nine, ten shot combinations. He's not going out. Should I try something different? See, I think Gaucho was expecting more of a brawl than this. I don't think he was expecting such a, uh, such a, a, a technical approach from Mohamed Fakhreddin. As I said, Fakhreddin has an extremely high fight IQ. He just chooses not to use it. Again, with the head movement, rolling off the punches. Nice stiff jab to keep. Or was that a little bit of an eye poke? Could have been. We're having a little, little break. Decky's going to make sure what's going on. Initially, we I may get a replay, tell. Phil. Yep. It was nothing I could see from my angle. Did you see anything? No, I couldn't see. I thought it was more of a, a pop jab. But again, we only get to see these things. Uh, we get to see these things more than once. We get the the luxury of a replay. Referee Decky Larkin does not. So, Fakhreddin clearly. We'll just we'll politely ask the gentleman in the truck to get the replay. And, and here's here we the go. replay. Walk us through it, Phil. And there you see it. I Initially, I thought it was the job, but oh, no, your referee, Deggy Larkin, was 100% right in his judgment there. That's an eye poke. And again, I don't think it was anything uh, intentionally malicious from Daniel Gaucho. It's just by virtue of the fact that these MMA gloves are fingerless to facilitate the grappling, sometimes the, the hand is outstretched. Agreed, Phil. If uh, if, if Decky thought that that was a malicious, intentional eye gouge, he could end the fight right here, could DQ him instead. Our fighter has got five minutes to restart, up to five minutes. He can take less if he wants to, and it sounds like the latest isn't going to take that full five minutes. He wants to get right back in the fight, although I'm not sure he's got two eyes right now. I think his vision may be ever so slightly compromised, and that might be confirmed by the fact he's holding a much higher guard with his hands there. It's not just Phil not being able to see punches coming in from that side. You also need two eyes to gauge distance. Being pressured now. Gaucho putting the pressure on Faku a little bit more. Again, throwing feints with those kicks, trying to get reads from Gaucho. Fakhreddin keeps moving to that eye. And you can see when Gaucho throws a shot, he puts absolutely everything into it. He's catching Fakhreddin just a little bit more with that rear hand. And on the single, needs to be wary of the guillotine. Oh, he's looking for it. Wow. Phil, the power of Gaucho to just grab that arm and power straight out of it is something to behold. But he's also now aware that should he be reckless and going in in such a fashion that Mohamed Fakhreddin does have submissions in his locker. He does it that. As you said, he's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. There's an old saying in jiu-jitsu, every time you get punched in the head, you lose one belt. I think Mohamed Fakhreddin gets a belt every time he gets hit in the head. <laughs> Those submission skills will never leave him. Looks like he may be trying to set up that, that rear straight. But again, the, the intelligent lateral movement. Only thing is, constant perpetual motion like that will eventually take its toll on the gas tank. It does indeed, unless he can set his as he's moving, if he can sit Gaucho up for a couple of body shots, say two of them, that can even things up. That's a nice stiff job from Fakhreddin. Oh, oh. Gaucho charging forward now. May smell a little bit of blood in the water. Fakhreddin's still on his toes, hasn't rocked back to his heels. I like the counter work there. Just a little bit of a slip trying to come forward with his own shot as Fakhreddin. Needs to get out of that danger oh. zone. Again, Fakhreddin showing that, his boxing that, that ability. That head movement is blowing my mind. Fakhreddin went in the head again, again denied. The extraordinary power of Gaucho cannot be denied. A little bit of a deep breath there from Fakhreddin. 
Phil Gaucho's mouth now appears to be open. He may be gassing to a degree. Oh, beautiful head work from Mohamed Fakhreddin. Just, he's been rolling with these shots beautifully and rolling underneath, trying to come up top with something of his own. Oh, that head work is absolutely sumptuous. One concern with head movement, of course, always is whether the judges see those shots as landing and the head moving in reaction to them or if they were defensive and the shots were not landing clearly. That can often be ambiguous when you watch from the outside. And there's a little bit of a cut over the eyebrow of Mohamed Fakhreddin. Can't, can't quite see just how long's left in this round. Gaucho showing a little bit of fatigue. Fajo maybe getting a little rest by getting hit in the head a little bit. Ten second clapper, there it is. Woo! What another round. Two warriors touch hands. Good show of good sportsmanship. And this is where it comes down to what you are made of as a mixed martial artist. This is where it comes down to how bad do you want it? We are not championship rounds, a real test of each fighter's mettle. Phil, I really do believe that a, a five-round fight is one of the great tests in sports of an opponent, of, a, of, of an athlete's heart. I think it's tougher than a marathon. I don't think there's anything quite like those final two rounds. This is what's going to take the full measure of these two men. I'll be honest, I can't quite remember off the top of my head if either of these men have gone five rounds before. So it's potentially new territory for both men. How much conditioning they've done, of course, is extremely significant, but another part of it is will. And as I have said, I don't know anyone with greater will than the latest. Fakro just motioning, there's a bit, little bit of loose tape on his glove that he wants to get rid of. A, potentially a veteran move there because it was loose in the third round, so perhaps he's just getting an extra, an extra little breather. Muhammad Ali famously did that against Joe Frazier, second fight. Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Fakhreddin, not a disservice to either to mention them in the same breath. I like that Fakhreddin is landing his punches after kicking as well, constantly keeping something in the face of Daniel Gaucho. I agree. I think Fakhreddin is going to try and tire his opponent out. I think he's going to do constant feints, trying to get reactions. He's going to attack that body more. I think Fakhreddin sees his path to victory as the championship oh, rounds. He landed clean on the chin of Gaucho. And with Gaucho being so heavily muscled, so, you know, a little bit shorter, but so heavily muscled, you've got to wonder just how quickly fatigue will set into those muscles going into the championship rounds. Gaucho is not built for a marathon. He is built for knocking people out. That was a great straight right hand from the latest. Just shy with the uppercut. Fakhreddin turning it up a little, a little bit more, maybe sensing. Oh, that's a big shot. That was a big hand. Maybe sensing that Daniel Gaucho is a little bit tired, stepping up to Did pressure. Oh, oh, they stunned each other. Oh, he's on the That's it. Over the fight. Out with the line. Mohamed Fakhreddin has just captured destiny, has just captured his dream, has just captured the brave combat federation medal win title of the world the face of mma in the middle east is now champion of the world you are not only looking at the latest you are looking at the undisputed mohammed fakhreddin take a boy sir what a moment in middle east history I'm going to say it, unbelievable carry. What a night, Phil. The latest Mohammed Fakhreddin. Mohammed Fakhreddin at 36 years of age. Some people wrote him off as the veteran of mixed martial arts. Some people said he was too old to do it, but he went in there. And Championship round, illustrated his skill, his quality, and he is now a new 
Brave Combat Federation middleweight champion of the world. And Philly fought the fight he wanted to fight. He didn't just fight strategically. He stood, he traded, he used his exquisite head movement. And when he saw the opportunity, he took it. Gaucho up on the seat. He's sitting on the stool now under his own control. He has not been seriously injured. He got stopped, but he's not going to have to get stretchered. You have to give credit to Daniel Gaucho being in there and showing the heart of a champion and potentially in a losing effort against Mohamed Fakhreddin, he's further enhanced his reputation. He absolutely has. This is one of those losses that cannot do anything but bolster the legend that is Gaucho. Just a loss, not the end of his career. He's standing up now. Fakhreddin's got a whole bunch of cameras in his face. And you can see Cristiano Marcelo and Felipe Silva in there with their fallen fighter, Daniel Gaucho. And that's something I, I have so much respect for CM System about. Win, lose, draw, they do it together as a team. I have no doubt in my mind that Daniel Gaucho will be back. But right now, right here, in this moment, it belongs to Mohamed Fakhreddin. And that fight, like California girls, was unforgettable. Riffing off of what you said, Phil, Cristiano Marcelo, not just one of the greatest trainers in this sport, he's one of the anchors, one of the pillars. He's one of the reasons you see the sport as it is today. And look at the strikes land there. Deki Larkin, referee, takes a shot to the kidneys there from Mohamed Fakhreddin. <laughs> Fantastic stoppage, it has to be said, from Deki Larkin. Sends Mohamed Fakhreddin doing what he has to do, hitting everything in front of him, even Decky, until it's called over. You got it, you got it, met Decky Larkin took that shot like a champ. And what a moment that, like, if you talk about the adversity that Mohammed Fakhreddin has had to endure this year from the, the, the tragic fire, the, the burning down of his family home to the, the situation in Lebanon, the massive explosion there, to not being able to travel to Romania to, to compete and provide for his family, to now, as I say, realizing the dream at 36 years old, becoming the undisputed Brave Combat Federation champion of the world. You see the two combatants trying to knock each other out. Now they're embracing. This is why I love the sport. This is why I love both men. This is why I love Brave Combat Federation. What a day that man walked through the fire this year, came out of it smiling, champion of the world. Ah! Phil, name a moment in Brave Camera Federation history that, was, that made you happier. I don't think there is one. And now to crown it off, the cherry on top, Carlos Kramer, the returning, roaring lion of Brave. Make it official, my brother. All right, ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, what an incredible main event we had tonight at Brave 41. This amazing bout comes to an end at one minute and eight seconds of round four. Your winner by technical knockout and new Brave Combat Federation middleweight champion of the world, the Arab legend, Mohammed, the latest, Papra D!